Welcome to another episode of Conversations with a Love Activist. It feels so good to be back. So in this episode, we are going to be talking about the sealing of the womb with Gogo Sophia. Uh, the sealing of the womb is where our creative power sits, also where our deservability and self-validation also sits. So as you know, I have been struggling <laughs> with needing external validation. So this episode was really, really needed for me on a personal level. So stay tuned for that. Also, um, a transgender ancestor came up during the womb meditation. So stay tuned to hear what that is about. Subscribe, share, comment, and let us blossom together. Love you. You're looking beautiful. You're glowing. Yeah. Uh, there's this peachy, juicy, ripening. Um, oh, gosh, I love all these words. Mm -hmm. Last week was the beautiful retrograde <laughs> week that it was. <laughs> that was just like here to jolt and to help us to be present. Absolutely. And it's so easy to resist and resist that that presencing that's being forced to happen mm -hmm. i resisted i was just like what the hell's going on why is my computer not working and my other computer and my brand new mm -hmm. camera just in one day and i have things to record and 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 mm. so ultimately it's about vibrating to the frequency of what i am creating and it's about the deservability, the worthiness that really, you know, at the core, I really feel worthy of what I am birthing, that I don't need mm. to physically do anything and continue to pr prove myself and seek validation from outside of myself. <laughs> mm. So that I can, yeah, bring that into manifestation, attract anchor embody okay and it's really about recognizing the support of the divine and co-creating mm -hmm. with our divinity okay and often our divinity is our blind spot and when our divinity is our blind spot we look to the external to validate mm -hmm. what is within already within us what is already available right it's like you have these perfectly amazing experiences and it's been validated over and over and over and over but there's still that am i still worthy of this so what are you feeling you know i found myself even though this incredible you know this incredible breakthrough has occurred i found myself um beating the drum of regurgitated vibrations in the sense that I'm calculating how much money I owe people mm -hmm. and all the things that this money is going to have to do. Mm -hmm. And instead of, you know, so in my head, money is still a thing that pays, that helps me survive. Mm -hmm. It's not a thing that helps me to thrive. It's not something I'm worthy to just enjoy. It must have a job. It must pay this person and cancel that debt. And that's all, that's all good and well. Yes, of course, that's what it will do. But I found myself in my head going, how am I going to, what's coming in is not going to cover what I need to pay. Mm -hmm. And I started to, to panic a little bit about balancing those, those two things. And so it almost was a way of, invalidating this big beautiful thing I created or or creating work for myself if that makes sense so that I can earn the worthiness to have this you know stability mm. because this is what this job is going to bring it's going to bring long yearned for stability mm. but I I, I found myself, I had to stop myself because already I was just throwing in resistance of lack. I was focusing on the lack that um, this money is going to, is going to um, have to patch up 
I was not anywhere close to rejoicing and being happy and being excited. I mean, my, my mom um, shared on her family group um, how much the contract uh, was worth. And I was like, oh, why did you do that? Oh, why did you do that? And, you know, it's, mm. it's our first million rand contract. Mm. And my thing is to be like, no one must know about it. I don't want people to know that. <laughs> and so I, I have to look at why am I afraid? Yeah. What am I afraid of? What am I afraid will happen that people will find out that my business has generated millions of rands? Why is that something that is scary to me? Why is it that I don't want people to know that kind of information? Yeah. So it's, yeah. yeah, I suppose with manifestations comes even, you know, a new level of work that has to be done. It's not like the manifestation is here and then we're finished. No, it's like, okay, now it's another level of healing that still has to happen around the thing that you've been praying for. Yes, even if it's been, you've been praying for it for 11 years, this brings up something else. That worthiness. Right? Yeah. <laughs> It's like, yeah. I have to do this to prove that I am worthy of how even million has manifested. Mm. All right. Rather than by virtue of being alive, breathing, I am already worthy. That for me is a hard concept to grasp. I don't want to lie. That I'm just. I'm just worthy because mm -hmm. there's there's no condition okay. around my my worthiness. It's not activated by action. That for me is just like I'm suspicious of that. I, I want something I can be able to show. Look, teacher, <laughs> look at all the things I did. Yeah. And but give what, me marks. But what needs to happen for you to believe that? What needs to happen for you to believe that you are worthy? I don't, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I will say that being on this journey and actively seeking out to love myself has definitely um, accelerated um, that, 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 um, that process of, of worthiness and understanding that I am worthy just because and so I think at the moment, on some level, I believe it, but I don't know it. Mm. And it's the getting to the absolute knowing part that I, I'm trying to get to or I'm striving towards where I know like I know like I know. Not that I just, I believe it and it's wet and, oh, girl, I'm so worthy. No, I, mm. for me, like the way Mali knows, Mali knows that she doesn't have to do anything to prove herself to anybody. She just is, she takes up space. She, she is comfortable within herself. And I'm just like, okay, but you raised this person. This part of this is because of what you have done. And so why can't you know it for yourself when you see it in, in, in someone whose life you have, you know, imparted that w innate worthiness and knowing um, for herself. So I think for me, it's continuing on this journey. And for however many lifetimes I need to continue mm -hmm. so that I know that I'm worthy, not that I am suspicious mm -hmm. of ease and I'm suspicious of flow and I'm suspicious of yes, you know, I was thinking about it literally an hour ago that we're so prepared for no. We're so prepared for rejection that we can deal with, we can cope with, even though it's one of our biggest fears, because it's one of our biggest fears, we're so prepared for no. What we're not prepared for is yes. We're not prepared for what if your dreams come true? What do you do then? That part we are completely unprepared for. And 
a lot of the time when our dreams do come true, they blindside us. And we're so frazzled by this change that we self-sabotage. We go, I know how to deal with struggle. I don't know how to deal with this. And I don't want to get used to this life of ease because then when it's gone, yeah. I'm going to be devastated. Whereas in, I'm used to being on the floor. I'm used to scrounging. I'm used to that. I know how to, yeah. to survive. I don't know how to thrive. Yeah. And again, you know, when answering that question, you were still going on about how much you still have to do and how much you still have to heal and how much you still have to. It's like, I continuously have to, have to, have to, have to you know, <laughs> um, to receive. <laughs> I have to work still. I have to put in the work. <laughs> okay. All right, so yeah, we're gonna go into the mapping right now to see what is what is sitting there, what is causing this separation. What did you discover in that inquiry? So the issue of earning came up. Trying to earn, 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 and holding on to this a model of you work, you earn, you get paid at the end of the month, this kind of construct that adults must live in, um, whether it's earning, earning my place in friendships by always being the happy light one or earning my place in my family by always being whatever it is I, I think that people need me to be. Um, be it you know don't shine too bright people are going through their own things and so if you sh if you shine too brightly right now it will it will make people feel bad um, hence I haven't told most of my family about this beautiful thing that it that you know has happened including you know members I was in a whole master manifestors group with <laughs> you know um, I'm fine to share the small things, uh, the small shifts, the small um, manifestations, but the, the big bombastic, I never expected ones. I'm like, no, it will make people feel bad. Even though on the same breath, I know that I can't make anyone feel anything. Just like no one can make me feel anything, I can't make anyone feel anything. But there is that thing at the back of my mind. Otherwise, I would be free. I would freely share with the people who love me and care about me that this is what, you know, has happened. You know, your, your prayers have amounted to something really amazing. When, when you asked about um, what sensations am I feeling in my, in, in my womb, it felt airy. It felt um, bright. Um, I felt a light uh, fizzle um, at the at the top there. Um, I did though when you said um, is there a leak that you have identified? Uh, there's still a leak on my on my right ovary. It's not as bad as when we started um, uh, a couple of weeks ago, but I can still feel there's something there um, in terms of my my right ovary what what does the right ovary control again yeah it's the masculine and it's the fire the passion uh -huh. yeah, your sexual energy your life force what else came up for me so i'm i'm doing a a morning ritual mm -hmm. with or i'm preparing for a morning ritual um with with millie actually um for the children I, you know the miscarriage and the, as a way to acknowledge those lives to it's a naming ceremony to name those babies so that they can become ancestors and can be part of our family and um you know be recognized as part of our family and so i'm i'm happy that we're working towards towards um towards that ceremony. So there I felt 
I felt light, I felt held. And I think especially because a lot happened during the sacred morning ceremony, I mean, sacred morning course that we did together, um, that subject doesn't feel as heavy as it, it, it did before. But I will say that now that I've taken out the loop and um, I'm busy waiting for my period to come so that we can start we can start the process of actively, you know, um, having a baby. There are fears that are, are starting to come up. So that anxiety around birthing, conceiving. Yeah. Basically, I'm, I'm being impatient about building the foundation that my baby will need to hold on to and seed as a healthy pregnancy, imagine. <laughs> and so, yeah. And there is definitely uh, an anxiety or or, um, a need of a proof of concept um, in this process of of, um, expanding and growing our family. I think a part of that is I, I want to get it over and done with so that we are almost forced to deal with all those other traumas around pregnancy that we as a family hold because the last time um, I was pregnant, you know, Quentin had started a new business. It was exciting. There were investors. It was this great time of creation um, for him. And then everything just fell apart. And even though he's told me the story that he knew, he knew that he knew his highest self told him that if this whole thing goes through, you will, you'll lose your family. This, this thing is going to consume and change you to the extent that there will be a life where these people are not integrated into your life. This baby that's on the way, this, this relationship that you've just, started it will all be gone do you see a relationship between your own creation energy and the conception of your child okay 100 percent. that anxiety around creation okay conceiving birthing okay and what can go wrong what can you know that that ultimately starts showing up in the womb space. Yeah, yeah, because even with this project, sure. there's, there's this thing of, it's all good and well now, mm. but what will happen when we're in the thick of the project? What if things go wrong mm. in the thick of things? You know, it's, it's ease filled at the moment, but anything could happen while you're in the, second trimester of the project let's say so yeah i'm definitely seeing the parallel you know creation is 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 creating moment to moment and it's about being present in the moment and the joys of the moment and the magic and the passion and excitement about the the creation you know rather than it being mechanical i want to get it over and done with i want to Mm -hmm. you know there is this contraction that happens when we um when we receive what we think we are not worthy of receiving and this contraction of not being it's like having a cup of chamomile tea and i love chamomile tea but i'm not even enjoying the taste Mm. of it okay and it is about the joys because there's an ancestral pattern now that is coming up on your you know about the suffering of, of of giving birth the suffering of creation, okay, that I have to suffer, that this is a painful, in order to create, I need to suffer and I need to feel pain. Mm -hmm. And only then is that creation worthy, Mm -hmm. okay? And it is about learning how to birth from pleasure. No. Okay. And learning how to birth 
from joy. Okay. And, you know, even from Quentin's side, there, there is a worthiness there. It's like, I don't deserve to have this job because it will take me away from my family. So I don't deserve to have both my family and this career. Why can't they both mm. work? Okay. Mm. So there's also a lot of that going around that you don't have to choose. Okay. That it can all happen at once. Okay. You can have the incredible career and you can have your babies <laughs> and it can be a joyful experience. Okay. It can be a pleasure filled experience. Okay. Where yeah. you are creating from joy, from pleasure, from ecstasy. Mm. Mm. Can you see that pattern of <laughs> big time, big time. It's been one of the biggest reasons. Yes, money has been one of the biggest reasons why we've um, delayed having a second baby. Mm -hmm. But another big one is time, is will we have the time to enjoy this baby? Mm -hmm. How are we going to manage time-wise to excel at our careers mm -hmm. and also thrive in our family? I was very much stuck in earning, earning, earning. Mm. I understand where Quentin was coming from mm. because I'd be in the office until eight, nine, ten o'clock in the in at night, you know, working on nothing, nothing that my input and my output did not match whatsoever. What I was putting in and what I was getting out did not match, and so for him. I suppose he was doing the calculation in his head that, okay, what if now a big project does come in? How much more time is she going to then spend at the office type situation? So I understand where he was coming from. And now that I'm much better in the needing to earn and needing to suffer, um, yes, work still needs to be done, but or that, that vibration is still very much active. And can you tell me when you have conversations around this child that you want to conceive, what is the motivation around having this child? For me, the biggest motivation for having this child is I want, I feel like there's a soul that deserves this version of me, mm -hmm. this, this mother that has grown so much and learned so much and is far more loving of herself. Someone deserves to experience this version of me. And I am open to the version of me that will be birthed with this new person. I'm open to the expansion that this person is going to bring into our family. Yes, do you feel under pressure to have this baby because there was, you know, because you, you didn't manage to carry to term the, the first pregnancy. Are there any family pressures? Do you feel like you owe Quentin something? This, this love that you want to give to your child, this nourishment, this support, this, I feel like you should be gifting it to yourself. I feel like you are that inner child that you are birthing. And I really feel strongly that your inner child is really calling for that nurturance and that love and that support that you are externalizing into the child that you feel under pressure to give birth to. So often when we most need to give to ourselves. We externalize that giving on other people or on giving birth to life, okay? It's like we transfer that to the child. Am I giving that to myself? Am I giving myself that level of passion, of love, of self-care, of nourishment, of investment? For me, I, I'm proud of the fact that I've created a whole masterclass mm -hmm. and platform for me to heal, mm -hmm. you know, and it, it was 
starting conversations with a love activist was about giving to myself all the things that I kept giving away. Mm. That was the basic premise of starting this journey of all this that you keep giving and giving and giving. Mm. How about you use the same amount of energy, but on you and on yourself? And have you had that conversation with Quentin? excuse me about that about this process of it being mechanical and you know what is really our intention and have you had that conversation with him no no because I feel like you know you you need to because you're co-creating together okay He's a divine co-creator. He's a twin flame to this creation process. Mm. Okay. And the two of you, yeah, you, you need to, you know, come together and really talk about your intention and, you know, connecting with yourselves, connecting with your intentions, connecting with that joy, with that pleasure and, um, and connecting with the spirit of the child that, that, that is wanting to be born, getting to know them as well at a deeper level and communing with the child on how they want to be conceived and how they, so you are calling on the spirit of this child. You, you are connecting with this creation and mm-hmm. In the same way in your own life as a creator to develop a relationship with your creation at the level of spirit Mm. okay because you're still engaging with it at the level of provider provide Mm. Mm. being productive being your child knows how they want to be created and they know the infrastructure that needs to be anchored in order for that to be perfect. Same as with your creation, with your business, okay? Knows the divine architecture that needs to be held within you. So at the level of spirit, when we working with the ceiling of the womb, we are working at the level of spirit your inner divine light. When we create with the divine, we don't have to micromanage our reality and our life. Mm. And we work with divine timing. And we trust and we surrender to the divine. And we ask, what is it that is ready to be birthed? What is it that is ready to happen next? at this time okay we don't overthink it we don't you know sometimes we have a logical plan we have this plan at the age of 36 this must happen at the age of okay birthing is a shamanic experience it's a rites of passage for you and for him i know i have been avoiding having a conversation about it because it's taken so many years to convince Quentin that it's okay to have another baby. And so it's like, you know, when, when you've built your house of cards, you don't want to mm. test it out. <laughs> um, you don't want to test out the validity of what you've built. But he has to be ready, right? Mm. Because you're in this relationship together. And you don't want him to be absent and to book out. You want him to be there 100%. Wow. Okay. Because as the feminine, then you carry the burden. (laughs) Okay. Because the port needs to be there. That's what I'm saying. That the architecture in which this being needs to come through the right Mm -hmm. setting, the right foundation so that all can be well. When we do womb work, it is is about creating an immaculate space, a pristine space in which Mm -hmm. we can birth our creation. 
Okay, so if you look at the birth of the Christ, of the Yeshua, the virgin birth of, of Jesus, that she chose not to be um, seated by a living being, a man, because that man comes with his own imprints and fears and contraction around birthing. So she had to, she knew this being, she had this conversation with this being, they made an agreement and he knew the great work in which he was going to create on this planet for humanity. But what is the infrastructure like for me, in order for me to become Jesus, the great avatar that liberated humanity and supported humanity to awaken to their own inner Christ. What had to happen? Mm. Okay. The soil had to be fertile and in the right condition. Okay. Mm. So I really think that, think about the conditions. Okay. And think about this being that you are also birthing. So we're going to work around that. How are you feeling, my darling? <laughs> yeah, I was thinking the sessions are going to get easier. <laughs> but uh, I, I knew this was coming in the sense that I've, I've been drawn to content about leadership and courageous leadership and being a courageous leader is being open to having hard conversations. Mm -hmm. And because I am stepping into this phase, this um, stage in my life where I'm taking ownership and leading, being a very conscious leader in my business, in my household, um, and no longer just a passenger, this, I knew this was. <laughs> I didn't expect it here. I thought it was something I was going to have to do in the, in the workspace. But I knew that as a, a courageous leader, building a courageous culture here in this home, I need to be open to having, being vulnerable, first of all, because the reason why I don't want to have those conversations is, is the risk involved, is the vulnerability risk involved. I'm just like, <laughs> okay, yes. That's good. I understand that this is part of the process of the liminal space um, that I've I've actively stepped into, um, <sighs> where I'm leaving that tule behind, but I'm not quite the tule I want to be in it. In the in between, and in the in between is where that tule is made, and that tule has to have hard conversations, has to have soft conversations, has to be more open, less defensive, mm -hmm. all the things that this tule that I've... And this is the perfect different. space, right? This is the safe space. Yeah. And this is not the space to come into when we, to be perfect and to be, to know it mm -hmm. all and to, this is a space you come into to step into our vulnerability and our shadow and our woundings. Mm -hmm. Okay. We don't have to, you don't have to be anything else, sweetie. Okay. You yeah. just have to be present for the healing. You just have to show up <laughs> for whatever it is. That's, I don't have to work for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to track. So is there a negative emotional state that needs to be cleared as well? Okay. I just want to know, my darling, when have you when you had conversations with your mom about um, giving birth? Was she ready to have you? She says, "I'm I'm the only one that was planned. <laughs> I'm the only one." Yeah. Um, between my two siblings, that she actually was uh, ready for because she was a a teen mom. And so, you know, um, when she was pregnant with my older brother, um, she was 17. You know, she, I doubt she had as much support as, for example, I had. 
um, I can only imagine that it was a, a scary time for her. Um, and when she had me, she was in her mid twenties. Even in the planning, you know, there could be pressure around mm. that planning to have another child and yeah, using that creation energy, because remember we spoke about the creation energy being something that can be used to have something like a child, to bring a child into this world, but we can channel it to expand and to grow and to focus on our career and our, you know, our, business and our life and what's coming up is this pattern of imprisonment mm. right. feeling imprisoned feeling you know because sometimes in relationships we can there can be a binding that happens like we feel binded or there is a sense of a trap mm. or I didn't have another choice other than to be you know in this prison mm. okay and sometimes we we nurture the reality that we think we want mm. okay and it's only when we can see our prison the prison that we have locked ourselves in okay so I feel like you're at an intersection in your life where there's something beyond this. Remember that the first couple of years of our lives, especially the first couple of years of our adult lives, what we play out is what we think is right. Mm -hmm. Okay, It's what we think we want for ourselves. But as we evolve and as we heal and we expand, we realize, wow, is this really still what I desire? Or is this what my ancestors desired? And have you ever been in a place in your life where you felt like you were in a trap? I felt imprisoned or victimized very much by my business, by the thing that I created myself. Mm -hmm. Because one of my main motivations of starting a business was to prove mm. that I didn't make a mistake by becoming a creative. You see, I, I'm a creative, but I'm a business owner. So mm. it, it validates what I've done as a, as a creative or the path that I've chosen as a creator. And for a very long time, I felt very imprisoned by my business until literally very, very recently when I realized that I can't expect my business to validate me. I'm the one to validate it with my own embracing of myself and knowing whether this business is here or not, I am still valid. I am still um, beautiful. I am still creative. I am still, I am still, I am. You know, um, that is something that just happened literally two months ago when I realized as much as no one can make me feel anything, nothing can make me feel anything. So my business can't make me feel the worthiness and the tick that I'm looking for. It, it, it cannot. And so because I was looking for something you cannot give, I, I felt very much imprisoned. And of course we create those constructs, the constructs that we create in our business we create in our relationships, we create mm -hmm. in our friendships, we create, it's, that is the, the center of which we are creating from that prison. Mm. You have the key, okay? And it's a time for you, the hummingbird is here very strongly and powerfully. It's a time for you to Create that blank canvas for yourself. Mm. Okay. Let go of the myth mm. okay. and create a new story. There's a new story that is wanting to be birthed out of you. And before you can even have this baby, that new story, before you can create anything. Remember that the script has to be green lit. <laughs> <laughs> 
before we go out and shoot it, right? <laughs> and it's to mm. change this, the construct of that prison, okay? And return to the Garden of Eden within ourselves. And it's not about Quentin and him not, in, not wanting to, you know, having, being shaky about having another baby. It's not about the business. It's about the Garden of Eden within yourself. And I suppose that's what being a leader is about. And it's why I've been so apprehensive about being a leader and really pressing into and acquiring the skills needed to be a courageous transformational leader. It's because it takes creating a blank canvas. I don't know that tool. And so I have to create a blank canvas for her to emerge. And that means letting go of this story that I've held on to and worked so hard to create. And, you know, we have this thing of you're 37 years old now. You've created, this is the story you've created. What are you going to do? What, this unknown space that you're going to go into, what do you think is going to happen there? Stay here. It's safe. When you asked uh, about the creation process, I, I, I found myself at Vala, you know, in, in, in that room, having to justify why I need, why this thing that I want to create is a valid thing to create. And I've known for a long time that I carry that through um, in my work, this needing for validation then shows up in so many ways. But I didn't, I didn't realize how embedded that was, that standing in front of a judge or oh, people who must judge uh, my proposal, uh, the proposal being my life and saying, check, you have permission to go live this version that we have given you permission to go and live. I didn't realize how pervasive it was. Yeah, absolutely, because that, you know, they can either be the judge or they could be your allies. So if, you, if you're mm -hmm. in alignment, mm -hmm. okay, those judges become your allies that facilitate mm -hmm. and support that creation, the midwives, okay? Everybody becomes at every layer or at every level that anyone, everyone enters the process, they become your ally. Okay? Mm. And to then stop seeing everyone as separate from you or mm. as an enemy or as a judge. Okay. These are the people mm. that are here to support you, to see your vision. <laughs> okay. Give them a purpose. <laughs> okay. We are all each other's allies. Okay. This defense thing is sneaky, hey? You don't even realize that it's actually the same side of, it's different sides of the same coin. Absolutely. They're on separate coins. There's one coin. Yeah, because we should be saying, thank God, the infrastructure, thank God, like there are people that are doing the admin and the work and the you know, the policies and they've set up a broadcasting session. Oh, thank goodness these resources are available so that I can just, mm -hmm. okay. Mm. And we are all divine. Okay, when I recognize the divinity within myself, I also recognize the divinity within, within everybody else that is seeking a purpose. So if I am mm -hmm. holding the light for that creation, Okay, then everybody else is also going to remember <laughs> the light within themselves. Okay, we are mm. all in this together. We are going to go in. <laughs> Higher self into your body. Just calling on your higher self to really support you to release this negative emotion of being imprisoned in the ceiling of the room. Making eye contact with your mother now, seeing her standing in front of you. You are ready to be free now, to be free to express yourself, your truth, 
just seeing your mother standing behind you, supporting you, placing her hands on your shoulders, and seeing your grandmother behind her. And all of your ancestors on your mother's line that have been burdened by this prison, burdened by this commitment that is an illusion. So that you can liberate your creation, your creation energy. And I'm calling in the medicine of the hummingbird because it wants to work with you. The hummingbird is all about changing the story, letting go of the old karma around our creation energy that is binding, hooking into our creation energy, ancestral karma so that we can really fully step into our power so that our power is not hooked and held down by those beliefs and those burdens that our ancestors have been carrying for so many years. So many generations. It's time to liberate ourselves and our ancestors. That was strange. Okay was very strange. Yeah, it was quite intense. <laughs> I want you to just take a deep breath in. Just keep closing your eyes. Just taking a deep breath in. Deep exhale. And I want you to disconnect from your mother and to disconnect from your ancestors and just thanking them. Just bridging love into your system. We did a lot of work in the heart chakra, the heart being disconnected. Are you feeling hot? <laughs> Okay, that's just the Kundalini energy just rising. All that creation energy that is being unleashed. Yeah, and this, this whole side of my body. Like this side of my head, this side of my heart, this side of my womb, this side of my ankle are all, I can feel them, this, my hand, mm -hmm. but only this side. A lot of energy. Yeah, because that's where the energy is going. It's the masculine that always wants to overdo, right? <laughs> yeah. What came up? Mm -hmm. mm. <sighs> Was a man, mm -hmm. a European man, mm. who this must be hundreds of years ago. Mm. Who basically was banished to this continent because they didn't fit. Mm. And I feel him so strongly. Mm -hmm. I yeah. don't know whether, whether he was trapped in a man, man, man's body or mm. trapped in not fitting into what was the ideal Mm -hmm. but this this man from the 1700s was yeah. coming up very strongly and mm -hmm. the struggle and the mm -hmm. tilling of soil and mm -hmm. struggle to harvest and struggle to fit and having to have a wife but he didn't want a wife and mm -hmm. having to have children but he didn't want children he wanted to be in another body. He wanted to be a woman. And he was trapped in this body mm. of a European German white man mm. in a Christian, very Dutch Christian church mm. construct where there's no way he could say that I'm in the wrong mm. body or my soul has chosen to express itself in another body. Yeah, and that's that prison that we're talking about, that we try and fit into this mold that is not who. So it's obviously an ancestral pattern, but also in past lives, 
you know, where you could have been this man, you know, the hummingbird does fly backwards, not just in our lineage, but in all dimensions, past lives, you know, and obviously that had to come up to be released. It's a past life that you had as a man. Okay. And we clear it on all in many dimensions and many realities. And it has to do with, you know, the right hand side of the body has to do with our work, our vocation, our sacred contract, the work that we came to do. And, and yeah, not feeling supported, not feeling like we can do this work. You know, and uh, yeah, he obviously yeah. just came up. Yeah, good, good. Yeah, just the isolation he was feeling. Mm. The claustrophobia I'm feeling. Yeah. I'm feeling that. The how come other people get to have blank slates and I don't? Mm. I'm just going to do deeper healing, deeper work. It's also your inner masculine that is wanting to be reunited with your inner feminine that is ready to, to step into sacred union together. And this is where the feminine meets the masculine, where the heart meets the mind. Sometimes we have to go to those faraway places to return with our essence. Okay. So you were reclaiming that which was lost to you. Okay. That freedom that was lost through all those past life experiences. So what came up was the Phoenix. Wow. The Phoenix that don't be afraid of your flame. Mm. allow the phoenix to to arise and just because you've been carrying this from lifetime to lifetime doesn't mean you have to carry it anymore mm. put it down and embrace being misunderstood mm. embrace being in full color embrace being something that may trigger people because you've embraced yourself. Mm. Be okay with that. Take down literally the, the German European man from the 1700s. He's literally dressed in like gray, scratchy pants and like a beige shirt with suspenders. And it's like, take off that stuff, take off that stuff, wear the chiffon and the silk and the flow and the, yeah. just be in that, yeah. in that luxuriousness that you've been so, so yeah. afraid. I mean, even my hair, I wanted all my hair to be this color, but I was like, no, I, I, I can't have green hair, yeah. you know, bright green hair. And the phoenix is like, you have to have bright green hair now. This, this is you. This is, this is you. It's time to call your tailor and say, we need to start creating this wardrobe that's been in my head for so long. It's time to create that. It's time to yes. fully embrace that flamboyance <laughs> that you are and not be afraid of what that will mean for other people because it's not for them. It's Absolutely. for you. It's a declaration of saying I'm putting down that, that story of put, you know, trying to take water out of a rock, trying to convince the soil to make something grow, trying to prove that, see, I can fit in your box. That's done. Beautiful, beautiful, honey. 
Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> From that pleasure, right? From that juiciness. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Right. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Entitlement yeah. and beauty. You know, yesterday I was visited by a dragonfly. Wow. And a dragonfly. <laughs> Transformation. Thank you. Wow. Joy, lightheartedness, new. Yeah. So, I hear you. I, I hear us. Thank you. Thank you, my darling. Take care. <laughs> that was intense. Uh, I, I did not expect a European white man from the 1700s to come up. That is definitely something I did not expect. And his energy was so strong. It was so... You know what it felt like? It felt like someone who's in a box, a, a, like a coffin even. And they just like are trying to get out or trying to get attention or have been trying to get my attention. Because I've always felt, man, no, this is not just from this lifetime. A lot of this is from other places. And he literally came up when she said, um, your ancestors, you know, and I saw my mother's 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 mother all holding each other on the shoulder. And then he literally pushed in. He pushed in into, into that, that process of mother's 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 mother's, which is why I suppose this feeling of him feeling trapped in in his body in his assigned gender because i've never felt like that I, i've never felt trapped in this body yes i've not appreciated it but i've never felt like i was in the wrong body and that that came through so strong and even even when we did a, a kind of second last meditation and i saw the phoenix rise and you know almost like his drab scratchy heavy clothing getting almost burnt away and him being able to wear the silky luxurious soft dress that definitely in the 1700s he would not be able to be wearing <laughs> in the dutch christian church um but I saw him, I saw him in, in, in a beautiful silk dress and I saw him smile and I saw him, I saw him, you know, and, and I had to say to him that I love you and you're safe and I see you and I see you. You haven't been seen for so long, but I see you. I see you and I love you. I love you. You don't have to fight anymore. You are seen, you are loved, you are heard. And that's me. Oh, that was super intense, friends. Sorry. Uh, firstly, I want to apologize to my transgender ancestor that came out because I kept misgendering him during the the episode but I mean there was a lot of emotions and I know they know that there is nothing for me there was no malice uh, intended behind that and funny enough so when I edit the episodes um, I take it as religion or the Lord has told me to take when I edit the episode as religion for myself so when I redid the meditation and mind you I didn't know that in this particular episode the answer that comes up because um, this was like weeks ago um, as uh, we got to the part where she says, let your maternal ancestors support you, uh, they came up. Uh, first, they, they were a male presenting in their uh, scratched yucky clothes. But then as they stepped into line and put their hand on the shoulder of the maternal ancestor in front of them, they transformed into this delicious African woman wearing this beautiful bright orange dress, like a puffy 
raw silk dress and with an elaborate headdress like the headdress almost had like a bag and she was smiling and I think for me it was just a confirmation that we need to be healing on this um, plane that it ripple effects into other dimensions as well for healing you are healed on multiple planes so that was really incredible that she came and said hi I'm fine thank you for doing the work so guys please share with us what that was like for you what came up with um, for you during this episode in the comments below and let us continue to be flamboyant and bright and take up space as this episode was about I love you